2000 lumens max output, dual light sources, exceptional runtime, and impressive durability. What's up everyone, it's 82, and this is my review on the Wubin L1. In this review, we'll start with the unboxing and check out the L1's features and functions. Then we'll cover some measurements, size comparison, and night shots with some drone footage. Finally, we'll wrap things up with the runtime and durability tests. Let's get into it. A box with inside a box. I wonder what's inside. Inside, we have the manual, a typical USB-C cable, two spare O-rings, a lanyard, and the star of the show, the flashlight itself. Check out the rotating head and the included pouch. Let's take a closer look at the pouch. On the side, there's a handy little pocket, perfect for storing USB cables. A nice tab helps stretch the pocket for easy storage. We have a Molly attachment point and a closed loop inside, ideal for attaching to a belt. There's a heavy duty D-ring on the top, though it's not removable. Here's what the flashlight looks like inside the pouch. Very nice accessory. I didn't even know it came with a pouch. Now let's take a dive into the features of the Wubin L1. This flashlight has two lights, the main spotlight and the auxiliary flood lights. The auxiliary light offers two emitter options but the Osram P9 is definitely the way to go. On the side, there's a USB-C cable port protected by a rubber gasket. The gasket has an indentation for the port. It also has a removable pocket clip, but I don't love that it rubs against the bottom portion of the flashlight. It will get scratched. Towards the back, there are two buttons. The top one controls the spotlight, and the bottom one controls the floodlight. In between the buttons, there's a battery indicator light. Here's a side profile of the flashlight showcasing its adjustable configuration from flat to L-type profile. The bottom features a very strong magnet, essential because this flashlight is no lightweight. The lanyard hole is also located at the bottom. The Wubin L1 is IP68 rated for water and dust resistance. Powering the L1 is a 21700 battery with a 4800 milliamp capacity. It has dual springs for terminals, a nice feature to keep the battery secure. Let's take a closer look at the charging process. The L1 charges at 4 watts or 0.8 amps. The total charge time is 2 hours and 19 minutes. Here's what the LED indicator lights look like, red for charging and blue when it's full. The flashlight remains operational in low mode even while it's charging. The L1 measures 5 inches long and 1 inch wide. When rotated to the L shape, the head is 1.4 inches wide and the length shortens to 4.8 inches. It weighs in at 177 grams. Here's a size comparison between other flashlights that I have. For size reference, here's how it stacks up against a $100 bill and a credit card. Let's explore its functions. The main light has four brightness levels. Single press to turn on. Hold down to change the brightness. Quick double click to turn on turbo mode. This is the brightest mode at 2000 lumens. The upcoming portion features strobe effects. If you're sensitive to flashing lights, please skip ahead. Triple click to activate strobe mode. Another triple click will switch the flashlight to SOS mode. Strobe only works on the main light. This is the end of the strobe section. Now rotating the head to show the auxiliary floodlight, which has three brightness levels. No turbo or strobe mode here. You can turn both lights simultaneously, though the auxiliary light is limited to low and medium modes when the main light is on but it does have a memory function to remember the last brightness setting. Now let's see how long this flashlight can run. Starting the test on the brightest mode, turbo, it dimmed down to medium at the one minute mark. The timer encountered an issue and I had to reset it, but the flashlight continued to run on medium for four hours and 22 minutes, slightly dimmed down at six hours and 30 minute mark. Finally, it dimmed down to low at eight hours and 30 minute mark, dimmed down a bit more at the nine hour mark, and the L1 shut off at nine hours and 40 minutes. That's a great runtime considering that it ran on medium for four hours and 22 minutes. Let's head out to the backyard and put the L1 to the test. Here's the main light on turbo, lighting up the trees 75 feet away. Really like this beam pattern. Switching to the auxiliary light on high, we move closer to the fence line. Now let's test the brightness levels.
illuminate the area quite well. Now let's check out the strobe and SOS modes. This is the end of the strobe modes. Here we are standing 30 feet away from the trees. And now we're 5 feet away to showcase the flashlight's lower output. This is me walking with both the spot and floodlight on. Moving to the drone shot. The drone is 50 feet up in the air, capturing the brightest setting for each light mode. Now the drone is 100 feet in the air. What do you think of this flashlight? Pretty impressive brightness and beam patterns. I'm using the spotlight and the floodlights in this drone shot. Let's see how well this flashlight holds up to daily abuse. First up is the drop test. We drop this flashlight 50 times from 5 feet. Just some tiny nicks on the head and bottom. Mainly caused by the pocket clip moving and rubbing against the body. The L1 worked like normal after the drop test. Next is a scratch test. I'm using a pick and a flathead screwdriver. Some light scratches, especially on the bottom of the cap, but overall, it did well. Moving on to the impact test, using a 27 ounce rubber hammer. Most flashlights pass this test, and the L1 is no exception. Thanks to its dual spring terminal, it felt very solid. The flashlight performed flawlessly after the impact test, with no damaged parts, malfunctioning buttons, or flickering LEDs. Now the water splash test, an easy pass with its IP68 rating. I feel bad for wasting water, so let's add one more test to this review. The freeze test. Most flashlights will fail this test. That's the reason why I stopped doing this test. I feel like I'm wasting a flashlight on a review when I could be using it on a future video or giving it away. I think the L1 should be fine. Let's check back in 12 hours. Wow, it's acting a bit crazy, but the light is still on. After thawing it out, the flashlight is working perfectly. The battery compartment is completely dry. Do you find this test useful or is it too destructive? There's a little moisture in the USB port, but I didn't have any issues with charging. The Wuben L1 is incredibly durable. We froze it for 12 hours and it was still on. Sure, it acted a bit crazy at first, but after de it, it worked perfectly fine. The L1 offers an impressive runtime of up to 9 hours. Testing it for such a long period of time takes a lot of effort. If you appreciate our thorough reviews, don't forget to hit the like button. The maximum output of 2000 lumens, this flashlight is incredibly bright. The head of the light can be twisted to provide different lighting scenarios. All that power generates heat. The Wuben L1 gets quite hot in turbo mode for extended periods. Keep this in mind if you plan on using it in the highest setting often. You get a lot for the price. Wuben always impresses me with the accessories they include. Loving the included pouch. The buttons on the Wuben L1 are very sensitive, which can be great for quick access, but can lead to accidental activation. A lock function would help prevent this. When you turn the flashlight, the button position change. 
This can be confusing in the dark and might cause accidental self-blinding. If you found this review helpful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.